Iceland, the land of fire and ice. It is my immense pleasure to be able to visit Iceland for the very first time. When it comes to natural beauty, it doesn't really get any better than the country of Iceland. My mission is simple. I have one rented car and about a week's worth of time here in Iceland. What I want to do is see as much as I can in that limited amount of time. Renting a car gives you the freedom to go wherever you want, whenever you want. Now, as much as I would love to continue talking to you in this intro video, my time is limited, so I will leave you here. But the good news is, you're coming with me. Now, let's go see Iceland together. hiking and trekking. Iceland just might do it better than any other place on Earth. At the very top of the list when it comes to hiking in Iceland is the Logavega Trek. The Logavega Trail is a world famous three to four day trek through some of the most spectacular sites in the Icelandic wilderness. The Logavega Trail is actually only available for a few months throughout the year. It opens up around the start of July and is walkable from July, August, and into September. The starting point of the Logavega Trail is a place called Landmannalaugar. They also call this place Tent City since when you get here by bus, you'll see all these tents propped up right at the beginning of the Logavega Trail. So obviously it's a very popular spot to start the hike. Really what Landmannalaugar is known for is the color of the mountains. So these mountains they call rainbow mountains because you look at them and they are all types of different colors. There is actually a, a pretty prominent peak, a, a high mountain called Mont Blandrico or the Blue Peak. You can go to the very top of the Blue Peak which is a pretty serious hike and get a terrific view. Welcome to the summit of Mount Blanjuka, otherwise known as the Blue Peak. Getting up here can be quite the challenge. It takes anywhere from a, a, an hour to two hours depending on your level of fitness, but I would encourage you to push through uh, the tiredness, push through the, the sweat, push through the difficulty because when you are up here, you get a sight of all the beauty that Iceland has to offer. On one side, you see the mountains with all of the colors. It's no surprise they call these rainbow mountains because you look at them and you see almost a light pinkish color, a dark brown, green. To the other side, you see hills, volcanoes, and lakes, geysers with steam popping up. Um, it really is the quintessential Iceland postcard getting up here. It's called the Blue Peak. It gets its name from the shimmering blue black color of its sides. One cool fact is that the rugged terrain that you see here when you climb up literally was formed out of lava. So you're walking on an old lava formed mountain. From here you get a good shot of the Landmannalagar campsite. You can see all the tents that look like little puny ants. One thing to keep in mind if you are coming up Blanjukur is to take your time, don't make it a race, especially if you are here in the summer months, you have all the daylight in the world. I say that just because some of the gravel can be a little bit loose um, and it's not worth slipping off the side of one of these uh, drops here because the drops seem like they don't end. It's safe to say that if you do take on the Blue Peak hike, it will be one of your favorite hikes you've ever done. Once you are up here, enjoy the view, take it all in, and congratulate yourself on a terrific view. Those of you who are hiking enthusiasts, 
who love to push yourselves and enjoy being in one of the most beautiful places in the world should definitely consider hiking the Logovega Trail. photographed mountain in all of Iceland. Gökufet is this towering peak right off the side of the highway. If you are at this part of western Iceland, it's impossible to miss. Next to Gökufet is actually Gökufet Foss, which is this three-tiered waterfall that is just gorgeous. On the opposite side of the waterfall is where you can take that really well-known shot of the waterfall on one side and the mountain on the other. Where we are now is just around this lake, just about a five, 10 minute walk from where the waterfalls are at, at the Kirky Fed entrance. So it's relatively close, close enough for a day trip. And if you are going to Reykjavik, certainly put this on your itinerary, even though it is a few hours away, you see just how gorgeous it is and how isolated this peak is. It's something kind of straight out of a a Disney park or a, a Disney story. It, it really is beautiful and you can spend as much time here at the lake, at the waterfall, and certainly enjoy the scenery. that one of the most popular tourist destinations in the entire country of Iceland is a crashed military plane. Thankfully, everyone in the crash survived. The result of the crash was just a pilot error. The pilot switched to the wrong fuel tank, downing the plane. The result we have of the crash is a pretty amazing sight. You have this large silver United States military plane contrasted against this black sand beach of Iceland. It makes for a really interesting and unique picture. And if you want to come and see this site, there's a small little parking lot right on the edge of the highway. You can park there and there are some signs that will point you to this direction. It's about a one hour walk if you're walking at a pretty good pace to get out here. So you want to make sure you have enough food, supplies, and certainly camera equipment if you want to come and photograph this thing. Going inside is pretty cool. There's not much there. There's pretty much just the main shell or the main body of the plane. Obviously all the wings are gone, but going inside and going around, it gives you a good idea of what happened or what the crash was like. If you are in the area, make sure you pass by and see Solom Sandar. The plane is a really, really cool sight. It gives you an interesting perspective and it makes for a wonderful picture. to bet that you've probably never seen a beach quite like this, otherwise known as Diamond Beach. There are a few things that make this beach really unique. First of which is the sand. We're on a very fine black sand. I'm sure that goes back to volcanic roots somehow. They call this place Diamond Beach for a reason. Upon the shore, large chunks of ice come washing up and they look like diamonds in the sun. So on a day like today where it's relatively sunny, I won't say warm, you have these chunks of ice wash up on the shore and reflect the sun to give the appearance of diamonds. Now these chunks of ice are coming because there's a giant glacier on the other side of the beach. This glacier provides the ice that floats around and makes its way to the beach. It is nice and sunny out and the sun does provide a little bit of relief from the cold. However, this is not your traditional beach in that this isn't a place you probably want to stick your toe in the water. 
In fact, you want to be careful of that unless you want hypothermia. The sand really is cool. I actually put some in a little container and I'm going to keep it with me. I've never seen sand like this before. It's pure black and very delicate. It's quite a drive to get out here. It's about four and a half, five hours from Reykjavik. But the drive is absolutely worth it when you get out here to see the way that these chunks of ice reflect the sun on the beach. The diamond, contrasted with the black sand, it really, really is cool and it's worth your time. So if you have the time and you or you're able to get out here, you should definitely plan on it because not only can you see Diamond Beach with the black sand, you'll also be able to see a real life glacier, which not a lot of people get to see. front of Gullfoss, one of the most famous spots in all of Iceland and a premier attraction on Iceland's Golden Circle. Goes without saying that this waterfall has some serious firepower. In fact, so much so that early in the 20th century, it was considered using this waterfall as a power resource. There was speculation about harnessing so much power from this waterfall that it could eventually generate electricity. Goldfoss is a waterfall that cascades in two stages. The first stage is about 36 feet high, and the second stage is a staggering 70 feet. Where we are right now is close, maybe a little too close for this video, but I wanted to give you an idea of just how massive this thing is and how much power it generates. This waterfall is considered by many to be the most beautiful and prominent in all of Iceland. In Icelandic, Gullfoss means golden waterfall. It was given that name because when you look at the waterfall in the sun, it has a golden tinge to it. If you are making this stop on your golden circle trip to Reykjavik, make sure to come and get as close as you can. Be warned, however, the closer you come, the more wet you will get. The runoff from the water splashes off in the people who are here watching. So, so long as you stay back from before the waves, you'll be okay. But just get ready to have yourself and possibly your camera equipment get a little bit wet. But trust me, it's worth it. This waterfall is beyond cool. So please come here and just appreciate how powerful and really how awesome this place is. seven minutes in the center of the geyser hot spring area, you see the great geyser. Now this is a very, very large geyser that shoots boiling water up in the sky about 100 feet. If you go to um, the fountain shows at Las Vegas or Dubai, this is essentially nature's version of that. And when you get nice and close to these hot springs, you can feel the heat as the steam comes off off the boiling water. Geysers actually surround this entire area. So if you walk around, you'll notice that there are uh, several areas where you can get very, very close to these hot spots and see these boiling water. So obviously, if you're close to Reykjavik, if you're planning on doing the Golden Circle, make sure you hit the geyser hot spring area and make sure to spend some time waiting 
for the great geyser that shoots up every five to seven minutes. Again, the good news is you won't have to wait too long because it's gonna be shooting up. Try and camp out and get a good seat right in front and then go a little further back so that you can get a good vantage point of that great geyser shooting off. If it's not on your list already, be sure to put Silianfoss as one of the go-to waterfalls to visit. What makes this waterfall so unique is that you can go behind it. Having a path that you can hike, run beyond the curtain of the waterfall gives you that really unique perspective that you don't see really anywhere else. When you come here to visit Silianfoss, just be prepared to get wet. Obviously, being this close to a waterfall, you're gonna get a little bit of water on you, especially if the wind blows. Sianfoss is a terrific location and one you should definitely put on your list. In a country with so many terrific waterfalls, it's hard to find one that's so unique. And yet, we have. What you are looking at is the most famous church in Iceland. This is called Hausgrimskirke. Hausgrimskirke is the tallest building in all of Reykjavik and the sixth tallest building or edifice in all of Iceland. Understandably, it's kind of a hot spot for tourists to see this really incredibly unique looking church in the center of the city. Hauskunskirka is visible from nearly any point in the city. You can always see the tip, very recognizable as it has the statue of Leif Erikson just right out in front of it. You can go inside for free like most churches in Europe, although when you do go on the inside it is uniquely different from most of the major churches and cathedrals that I've been into in Europe. It's got much more of a modern, nice, clean feel to it. You go into some of these churches in Europe, they're very, very old, and you go inside and they're beautiful, but they're beautiful in a more antique sort of way. They look a little grungy, dirty. They, they essentially show their age. When you go inside Hauskrimskirka, it's almost going inside of a hotel lobby. There's carpet, nice marble. The organ looks nice and clean. Stained glass looks really, really clean. It's well lit, it's not dark on the inside, and I was almost a little bit shocked and surprised by that, because most of these big churches you go into in Europe have a very much, very much of an old school feel. Going inside is well worth it. It is open to the public, so you can go in. Just make sure you're respectful, that um, you're not talking very loudly, you're not snapping pictures with your flash on, and you can stay as long as you like, or as long as the church is open. It was designed by the state architect Guyon Samuelson in 1937. The church itself was named after one of the most famous poets in Iceland, Halmagur Petrusson. And really the design was meant to encompass Icelandic nature. That's what kind of went into the design. You can kind of see it seemed like it's almost like cut out of ice or cut out of stone. One common misconception about the church is that it's often confused or labeled the Cathedral of Reykjavik. It is not. The Cathedral of Reykjavik is actually in a different spot. Um, this is just probably the most well-known church if you are in Reykjavik. Reykjavik. It is the capital as well as the largest city of Iceland. It really has a small town feel to it. You see a lot of tourists pouring in and out of the Hauskrimskirka church, the opera house, 
the Sun Voyager. It's clean, it's safe. Overall, it's a very wonderful, charming city. Reykjavik is definitely a city worth exploring. It's most likely that if you come to Iceland, you'll be spending at least some time here. I would recommend that you explore the House Rooms Kirka Church, the Opera House, the Sun Voyager, Logavega Street. These are areas all within five to 10 minutes of each other by foot. You never really get that big city hustle and bustle feel, even in the capital, a city with over 100,000 people. One thing you may have to get used to if you visit Iceland in the summer is just the amount of time that it's light outside. Right now, it's just past 11 o'clock at night. That's right, 11 o'clock at night. This can allow you to see several different sights in the city because you have so much daylight. So make use of it. Conversely, the opposite is true in the winter time. If you're coming to Iceland, then get ready for some pretty short days and a lot of winter darkness. Honestly, it makes photographing things at night a little tricky, which isn't my favorite. I like getting some good night shots. Uh, since it's never night, sometimes that's hard, but the daylight makes it worth it. a lava beach. The sand here, which is black, was made out of ash. There are actually several lava beaches here in Iceland, but this is probably the most famous one. This is a very famous, popular spot to take photographs, especially with the rock formations in the ocean. Instead of being real sandy, it's more rocky, especially the closer you get to the water. So you get to the water and it's, it's mini rocks, which really is better. The sand doesn't really get everywhere and, and annoy you. The rocks themselves are a little easier to deal with. You see this enormous natural pyramid made of basalt columns and people think that they look like a staircase to the sky and often you'll see people climb these and it's really a natural wonder and it complements the, the beach very very well. Try and come here too in, uh, in the evening where you can catch a sunset which are just gorgeous. Like most of the places here in Iceland, it gets busy, but not terribly busy. So you can come down here and enjoy a, a, a perfect evening and enjoy the cliffs and have it to yourself. Another good time to come to Rensvar Beach is earlier in the morning. There are just a few people here on the beach and to be here alone, you get a good, quiet, serene feeling. You just hear the crashing of the wave. Obviously come to Rensvar Beach. This, this is a gorgeous place. I'm willing to bet you probably haven't seen a beach like it to the extent that you're able to try and walk as far as you can along the beach and you'll be in for a very peaceful, serene experience. There are some pretty cool tall tales associated with Rensvara Beach. For example, the famous columns that you see when you first get out on the beach. Legend has it that these large basalt columns were once trolls trying to pull ships from the ocean onto shore. However, according to legend, the trolls went out too late, dawn broke, and the trolls were turned into stone. So aside from having beautiful beaches and just organic natural beauty, there are also tall tales and legend associated with the beach that makes it all the more interesting. So the closest village to Rensvara Beach is a city called Vik. Vik is just a small fishing village. However, there are some terrific hotels and restaurants and it makes for a great spot uh, to stop at if you do have the intention of viewing and coming to see the beach. When you come here in the evening, you get some great shots of the sun setting against the rock. Like a lot of the major sites here in Iceland, Rensvara Beach is not very far away from Reykjavik. If you're renting a car, it shouldn't take you longer than about two hours to get out here. And when you are out here, take your time, enjoy it, walk the length of the beach, and uh, take in what is one of the most unique beaches in the world.
So, are you impressed yet? Welcome to Skogafoss, the crown jewel when it comes to waterfalls in Iceland. Skogafoss is 200 feet high and a towering presence as you're driving by the small village of Skogar. Now Skogar is just about an hour or so out from Reykjavik, so doing Skogafoss in a day is totally doable. Skogafoss is also the end point of the Logavegur Trail. You'll see a lot of people starting their hike here or ending their hike here depending on the direction. Like Gullfoss, Skogafoss is incredibly powerful. When you get here at the parking lot, you can just hear the sound of the water crashing up against the ground. Now, although not terribly advisable, especially if you have very expensive camera equipment, you can walk up right to the very, very front of the falls. This will give you an idea of just how powerful this waterfall is. Make sure you're careful. You will get wet, as will your equipment, but it will be a very, very cool experience. Just to the side of the falls is a trail that leads up. Now this trail will take you the opposite direction, the Logavega Trail. So that means after you pass Skogafoss, you will go and pass about 25 other little waterfalls. If you keep going on this trail, you'll eventually go on the road to Thorsmark, where you'll see the Fimvermoros Pass. It's likely that you've seen Skogafoss in either Hollywood movies, commercials, or promotional materials. This is the quintessential image that appears in people's minds when they think of a waterfall. Skogafoss is accessible and visited by many all throughout the year. You can even come here during the winter time. It is a lot more cold and slippery, but still nonetheless very, very beautiful. If you have an affinity for waterfalls, or if you just want to see an awesome and terrific spectacle, you must come visit Skogafoss. As beautiful as it looks in pictures, it, they do not do the real thing justice. You will be mesmerized, you will love it. So make sure you put it on your list. Do not miss it. Make sure you bring your poncho. 